Hey, everybody. Eric in here live with you at the PowerCast Tuesday nights, 5 p.m., just a couple minutes late today. I want to thank you so much for joining us. We're going to talk about some cool things coming with the summertime. I want to make sure you guys are watching us live every week. Make sure you go to our YouTube channel, Team Powerhouse Real Estate. Hit subscribe. We love to watch you there. And while you're watching us there, you can always watch us on the replay. You've got Spotify, you've got Apple Music, you've got Twitch, you've got TikTok, you've got Facebook, Instagram, you name it, we're there with you, not wherever TikTok, you are. Not TikTok Live. Not TikTok Live yet. We don't have 10,000 followers, we, but we're no, close. Is, is that what it is, 10,000? That's I what think? you told me. Maybe one it's 1,000. Oh, 1, 1, 1, uh, okay. So we need 1,000 followers on TikTok. Please go to our TikTok channel so we what can do we have? live there with you guys. 200. All right, guys. so <laughs> that being said, Eric and I are going to talk to you about summertime. And bringing your house in the market nowadays is a great time to do it. Um, beautiful weather. Uh, we've got the days where you get up in the morning and you see the sunshine outside and the birds are chirping. Um, it just brings a, a happiness. A happiness. Yes. An emotional something that. <sighs> <laughs> makes you feel alive your spirits are in a positive mode and if you're buying a house you're excited to go looking for homes right i mean it just and the, when it comes to looking at homes in the summertime or spring summer it really is a big factor on, on how you present your house because there's a lot more emotions involved yeah in the winter time you're running in and out of houses it's cold you just want to get in the house so you can see it. You're not really looking at the outside as much as the inside. You're worried about the drive there because there might be snow and all this other stuff. I mean, it's just... Driveway conditions you know. of the I mean, it's something we have to do. Absolutely. You know, not, not just us, but, you know, you don't stop home, you know, home buying because it's not you never know, favorable. That's true. The weather's not favorable. As a matter of fact, we always talk about when people ask us, what's the best time to sell your house? And the industry is, honestly, when you need to sell your house is the right time. But well, it's what's best for you. I mean, there are parts of the year that historically have been, you know, like the spring market. Absolutely. You know, the spring market brings with it a, a uh, reputation Absolutely. of being, you know, better for pricing, et cetera. But. Well, it's actually funny you mentioned the pricing part. So there's two ways to look at it. Spring market has the bigger buyer pool shopping, typically. More homes come on the market. But the most serious sellers are selling in the fall, winter time because they have to sell. And with less competition they actually end up yielding more money for their homes, especially in the last two years. Um, right now with the spring market, you guys, I mean, again, we're kind of in this awkward, weird situation. This is the fact that we're still lacking home and homes and inventory, although inventory is definitely picking up. Inventory is definitely up, and there's still some places that are sitting for a while. Well, that's because people That's, that's to... more, well, that could be an indication of um, pricing. Absolutely. You know, just, you know, People just are, missing the spot on that on right. that price list there. They, you know, especially when it comes to pricing, you know, buyers today are very conscious about people who are trying to be outraged about their pricing, mm -hmm. um, and they're actually getting annoyed by it. Um, and that's why when it comes to pricing your house, you want to price it correctly. The buyers will dictate your purchase of power, or your your sale price, and the and the purchase power they have if you price it correctly. Um, and you're definitely yes going to make more money in this you know, era of homes for sale than ever before. But when it comes to pricing us correctly, it's very important. Uh, there's a lot of strategies that our team does when it comes to pricing houses, why we sell so many houses. Um, yeah, we you, did that earlier. Yeah, that's exactly right. Yeah. Uh, when, you're, uh, when you're out there looking at a house for as a buyer, um, you're looking at specific pieces of the puzzle, especially in this spring, summer market. I wanna call it summer, even though it's not summer yet, it's still springtime. I feel like we kind of missed them with spring because of the cold and the rain. We had so much rain. Mm -hmm. And now it's got this gorgeous weather. Speaking of that, I'm going to sidebar for a second. Uh, my wife, Valerie, she in, encouraged us to join this place called the Silver Sands Beach Club in East Haven. Let me tell mm -hmm. you if you've never been there before. You feel almost like you're in Miami Beach. And I say almost. They have palm trees. They've got a bar on the beach. They've got restaurants. They've got cabana boys that come by and feed you and bring you drinks. It is a little piece of heaven. And if you haven't been to Silver Spans Beach Club, it's something I think they actually ran out of. I think there's actually a waiting list to get in now because of the fact they have these, they have blockers, they have cabanas. 
they have uh you know just a very cool vibe which i definitely want to have you and the family and the team come out to the beach club it's a lot of fun jonathan nodded yes jonathan definitely <laughs> nodded yes jonathan nodded in, in the affirmative absolutely yes. you've got over there at the beach club they've got a splash pad for the kids and they've got two pools they're both heated by the way this pool for the kiddie pool which is so cool it goes from three feet to five feet and then you hang a left and it goes to like 12 feet with a diamond board um and then they have the the old the adult section which has again uh more of the adult swing 18 and older uh which i found to be less people in that pool ironically than the actual kid pool because i guess most parents are with their kids in the pool right you know but great place i saw a lot of people that uh uh, either have worked with before or friends and people who didn't even belong there. And I'll tell you honestly, you would not even know that this place existed if someone didn't tell you. It's pretty amazing. Um, anyway, Silver Sands Beach Club, big props. Uh, we had a guy, our, our commander boy's name is Dominic, who actually went to Xavier High School where Danny went, which oh, is nice. kind of cool, you know? Uh, very helpful people, good food, nice vibe. All right, anyway, going back to real estate, uh, not plugging the Silver Sands Beach Club necessarily, but kind of happened. Um, going back to the real estate thing, I'm going to say to you that Eric and I have been talking about this for some time now. And with the market being literally and physically hot this summertime, it's important to make sure there's key factors that you're focusing on and getting your house ready for sale. Um, some of the things that we want to talk about. All right. So what complements your home in the summertime? The landscaping. Definitely your landscaping. The exterior of the house, the property. You want to make sure your grass is cut weekly. It looks up to snuff, up to par. You know, you want to make sure that the grass is not dying. It's not a bunch of crab grass out there. Make sure if you're not a landscaper yourself, this is a good time to make sure you have somebody in preparing yourself for sale. And if you're out there, you have any questions, any thoughts or feelings, please do not hesitate to reach out to us. Instagram, Facebook. Hopefully Jonathan's got you watching, looking for you to answer questions for us. Um, but going back to grass cutting, making sure it's up to par, it looks great. And in addition to that, what kind of grass do you have? And I'm not sure how much you know about grass in Connecticut. There are a three different kinds of grasses that are pretty common. You're talking about my lawn? I'm talking okay. about your lawn. Okay. Um, so we've got, and I'm not sure, Eric, which kind of grass you got. The most common is what they call Kentucky bluegrass. Um, I never knew this stuff, by the way. As a matter of fact, a great guy to talk about this, we should bring back on the show, is Nick, is Nick Cavadas. Yeah with the Studio Escapes design, who we had in the show a couple weeks ago, it was phenomenal. How you set your property with plantings, shrubbery, flowers, greenery, makes a huge difference on how your house is gonna look from the outside if someone pulls into your house. Um, Eric's looking for information over here as we're talking over here for more information about it. <laughs> it's gonna stuff I'm weird. not actually. <laughs> oh my God. It's one of his girlfriends reaching out to him is what's going on over here. Um, so we got Kentucky Bluegrass, you got something called ryegrass. Ryegrass is a good turf grass. I'm not sure if you've ever heard of this before. And it's great in cool climates. So probably pretty popular in Connecticut. And then there's one they call fine fescue grass. Uh, it's a mixture of both the Kentucky bluegrass and the ryegrass. So good information to know about. What kind of grass do you have? And then do you have a company that does servicing your grass like a true green or a green thumb? or lawn doctor. I'm gonna tell you that, you know, we had our grass uh, for the last few years, been having challenges, and we found that which a company called True Green, which again, not a plug for True Green, they were fantastic about helping get rid of all the crab grass and all the different, I'm not sure what they put in the grass and all through it to kind of help make it grow and make it thicker and fuller. It really makes a difference. Um, I found it to be very impressive. That was Andrew, by the way. That was Andrew. Oh, <clears throat> Andrew R. Okay. Yeah. No. So, um, uh, the Middletown. Yes. He's um, he's ahead of schedule, so he's going to be there at five thirty. Oh well. So I had to give him the code to get into the unit so that he could start with what they got to do. He does a great job. We have some great videographers that we work with that we kind of keep it on the down low because we don't want anybody else to take our people. I was listening. It's just that's why I had to let. Nah, so I'm just joking around. It's work. It's all work all the time. This is uh, the kind of stuff. I mean, it's like you never know when it's going to surface. It's something's got to be done. It's important that we're always attentive to our phones for you. Of course, my phone is not near me because we're using it as we speak. Um, that being said, um, all right. So we have different kind of grasses. Um, and then you want to talk about what your outside of your property looks like. 
you have mulches. What color mulches on the outside of the house is a good color to use. Typically, I think black always pops the house. What do you think? I guess it depends on the house. I mean, um, I know when I bought my house, my house is a raised ranch. It's got um, tan siding, and it's got some brick on the bottom level. Yes. So they had uh, the green shutters on it. Yeah. Um, I didn't like the green. I'm not a big fan of the I didn't green. like the green, so I changed it to black, and I painted the door black, you know? And I thought it popped a little bit better, so. So what color mulch? Uh, no mulch. I don't mulch. Stone? Stone, no. Bushes? Uh, more like, yeah, bushes and, and uh, crabgrass. Crabgrass? <laughs> yes. That was the other green that you didn't mention in your list of many grasses is crabgrass. I'm a crabgrass aficionado. <laughs> Uh, we're going to introduce Eric over to the green people to help them with the crabgrass. You know, Martians. it's funny about that whole thing. Because we green talk people, the, Martians? Yeah, the, green, the, you know, the people who help take care of the lawn, not just the landscaper, because there are lots of different, I'm going to call it medicines that pe they use for the grass. Yeah. Um, it's really amazing. It really makes a huge difference on the kind of grass you're going to have, how thick and how fluffy it is. And your landscaper, how they cut the grass there's, a, there's a, actually a science to how they cut grass, which the way it grows, almost like on a head. When a, your hair barber or hairdresser cuts your hair, they go in a pattern that kind of needs to help the hair to look a certain way or grow a certain way. Well, when I cut my grass, yes. Well, when I was cutting my grass, because yes. Dylan does it now, but nice. uh, when I was cutting my grass, I was trying to do, to make it look like, like the... Baseball you know, fields? like the baseball field. Yes. You know, with that cross cut kind Nine of stuff. Yes. It was really cool. Uh, it never really worked out that way. It was kind of <laughs> close, but you know. One of the things that my wife always likes when it comes to the grass is she needs to see the lines. So we have a landscaper that comes and they do a phenomenal job. And they know that Valerie needs to see the lines, the cross pattern lines. Mm -hmm. That makes her very happy. Um, it, it may, you know, it makes a different effect when someone comes up to your house. And they see those lines in your grass. Well, I mean, looks... you, you'll see when you're looking at a house and, and you see in the public remarks, you know, you, the agent will often put uh, well cared for or stuff like that. You if you if you pull up on a house and you have a meticulous exterior, there's a really good chance that they could they took good care of the inside, too. That's a very good point. And that's a very and good that's point. something you want to know. Yeah. you know they've kept up with everything on the inside of the house and yeah i definitely agree i definitely agree 100 percent that the, when you walk up or drive up or pull up to your house and you see the outside well taken care of it definitely affects the emotion of what's going to be coming on the inside i definitely agree with you um and going back to that with the mulch you have flowers you have rocks you can put in there mm -hmm. um and the rocks have different colors they have red they have white well the rocks are more permanent which is which is pretty good because mulch you got to I don't know what the is it seasonal every year you got to do the mulch yeah, every couple to, of years maybe yeah I, I we actually switched over from mulch because we're doing mulch every year which was getting so expensive yep. that I said you know and the rocks more expensive up front but rock is going to last much longer after right well rocks usually last forever yeah they definitely usually. water can of course over time make them smaller right because water well, then pop pebbles out. Then exactly. Convert from rocks in my yard to pebbles. And then you just refresh the rocks. As a matter of fact, in our house, we have red rock in the front and we have white rock in the back. Um, because when we bought the house, it had the red rock there. Um, and I was like, how many hung about the mulch? But after like five, six years in the mulch, I'm like, that's it. I'm buying white rock. And yeah. the white rock is so pretty. Very, very pretty for the house. Um, my wife plays a big role on things that she'll say, let's do this. And I'm like, eh, I don't want to spend the money. And then later on, I'm like, I should have spent the money. I should have done that. She typically is pretty smart when it comes to what I should be doing or we should be doing. Even though I'm in real estate, it's like one of those things that even though you're in it, you still become frugal about certain things and you realize that the right move is to do the right thing the best way for Oh, I get ideas, design ideas and stuff, you know, in many houses. Oh, I like this fixture, yeah. you know, ceiling fixture. And then oh, wow, this one's even better. You, you know? ever take pictures? I don't, I don't buy any of them. <laughs> Do you ever take pictures? I, I actually been I take pictures of I them. Take Absolutely. Light fixtures or different things Absolutely. in the rooms. But I like... store them either for, for an idea for myself, yep. like in a remodel or something like yep. that, or um, for a client, you know? Absolutely. It's like you know a client that there's a particular component of the house that would work for them. You know, you share that with them, so. I was in a house uh, not too long ago where I was in this bedroom and they had these, uh, like, you know, with our four-year-old, we have, for Drew, uh, books. 
and they kind of end up kind of getting piled up and they had in the wall like the uh, slats like you'd see in a library where the books can kind of sit there so they kind of one two three four shelves which was brilliant to me right. and it was one of those ikea things they got and it was like oh my god i got to take a picture of this because it was so cool this is what we need to have for our house mm-hmm. I haven't gotten it yet but in talking about this it reminded me not to go back to my phone and kind of look at it i think i, I think i showed val about it so with that being said all right going back into the house the outside of the house, we get sidetracked very easily over here talking about real estate. <laughs> um, power washing your house is a big thing to do nowadays because it's been the green, the schmutz, the, the, the moss on the outside of your house that you want to make sure that you clean and, and give it a good power wash. Get, these companies come out, are all around for power washing, but something to be very careful of. Do not power wash your roof and do not let anyone power wash your roof. Why is that, Eric? Because the roof on top of the asphalt is a, a small granules they are called particulate, and it's actually um, part of the roof. So um, it protects it protects the asphalt part of the roof. So if you if you scr- if you wipe away those particulate, um, you're shortening the life of your roof. It's a, it's amazing because we kind of learned about this a few years ago, and we was just like a psh, wow moment when I heard this. I was like, I couldn't believe that this kind of a thing that you're doing on a regular basis, power washing because you see the moss on the roof and you like, ah, get rid of it, all that kind of stuff. So going back to the roof, you might have some leftover branches from winter time. You may have uh, uh, grass cuttings, or not grass cutting, but stuff from the air that kind of lands in your roof. Or you may even have moss. moss. So when it comes to moss, again, Eric, as you said, don't power wash it. You want to, there's, a, there's, a, there's liquid you can buy or medicine or things you can buy at Home Depot Lowe's. But I understand from what we learned is that one part bleach, nine parts water mixed together, spray the moss on the roof, let it sit, and then the moss will just pop off. That is super well, huge actually, it'll, it'll So what happens it is out. it dries out and then um, the rain uh, will, will carry it off. Yeah. So, yeah. That doesn't mean you should be out there climbing a roof on a colonial house. That just means that you know how it needs to be taken care of so you can hire the right people so you don't get injured. Yep. We don't want you to get injured in the process of getting a house for sale. Not a good idea. And if you, and if you want to prevent the moss, uh, the moss is because that, par- that portion of the roof is getting wet, but it's not, it's not getting enough sunlight. Right. So it's not drying. Yes. So you probably have a tree or something blocking it. Yeah. Um, I've seen in some houses the way they're designed. The part of the house because it's kind of like a you know multi-level yeah and there's a level of the house that's above this other level that blocks the sun from getting on it you're so, exactly right man yeah. that's exactly and right some folks they don't know that it's not that big a deal um but they see it and they're like i don't know about this you right know? It's a very common what we get up to a house that's got a lot of moss <clears throat> on it and it makes the roof look awful and old and in bad shape and that may not be the truth it just needs to be Clean. There are some towns, I'm sure, um, like your your Beacon Falls areas, your your prospects, yep. you know, that are more uh, rural. Yes. That the house is surrounded by trees. Yes. You know, At and Cheshire, then it's a, yeah. Oxford. Well, yeah, but Cheshire, you know, Cheshire, the the property lines seem more expansive. It's true. You Very know? true. Bethany. Uh, yeah, and Bethany for Woodbridge, sure. Woodbridge. Yeah. Woodbridge. So you've my, got pff, my parents' house. It's I a remember. forest. Totally true. And my parents, I remember there was actually like no grass even growing in the yard. Mm-hmm. It was just all moss. Yep. And then as soon as they finally cut back the trees, it completely changed the whole landscaping of the property. As a matter of fact, the house I grew up in in Woodbridge, the guy who bought the house, unbelievable job. He cut all the trees down. In the front yard, there were like 100 trees. Cut all the trees out. The grounds were absolutely gorgeous. The back, I mean. It's anyway, not a cheap endeavor either. Not a cheap endeavor. No. But again, hiring the right people to do this kind of stuff. All right, inside the house, summertime, you come into your house to buy it. The people come to your house to buy a house. There's some things that people are looking for and things you want to have for your house if you can and prepared so when they walk in the house, it feels nice and cool. If you have central air, super huge. If you don't have central air, something to consider looking into if you haven't done, done so already. And they have other systems like split systems. Split systems. And uh, also known as ductless AC systems. Those are very energy efficient. Some are just for central air. Some also have heat and electric. Correct. Um, but you know, some of these houses are already built, and you don't have the um, the ductwork within the framework of the house. Right. So, you know, although we've seen houses that have been modified to it, and you'll 
you'll open a closet door and you'll see a duct yes. going from the basement up to that, you know, up to the next level. So pros, pros and cons of the central yep. area, but then you lose closet space. Right. Um, and it's a good point you make, make that it's a much, much better idea to probably use a ductless system with that because of the fact of energy efficiency and not losing closet space. Mm -hmm. um, you also have, when I grew up as a kid in Westbrook, there was uh, in the, uh, and, I'm sorry, in the ceiling when you walk in the house, there was a button on the wall and this square thing, I'll call it, looked like an, uh, an attic space. And you see the louvers. And then you turn, yeah, you turn it on and then it starts sucking air in. Now, if you have one of those, or if you're looking to buy a house with one of these, or if you buy a house with one, it's very important how you use it. They're phenomenal, but you have to make sure you open up the windows in the house when you turn this machine on. Mm -hmm. Because if your windows are open, what's gonna happen is it's gonna create a huge vacuum of air that's gonna flow through the house. Pros and cons, great flow of air, con. All the pollen is coming in your house. So if you have any kind of allergies, this is something that may affect you deciding to use this kind of thing here. Yeah, that's not the way it was explained to me. No? When I first, <laughs> when I first bought the house and it had an attic fan, yes. um, they said, you turn the fan on, and what it does is it takes all, because heat rises, so the hottest air in the house will be at the highest level of yeah. the house. Um, what it would do, it, was, it would just, you would run it for like five to 10 minutes. It would take the hot air that's in the house up into the attic yep. and bring the cooler air up. Yes. Now with your concept of opening the windows, it's bringing the hot air from the outside into the house. Yes. So it's kind of, I'm, well, not, I'm not saying it's like, wrong. It I just, actually just doesn't realized make sense to me. It's not an attic fan, it's a central fan. It's what it's called. That's two different things actually. My apologies, I just realized I made it. So it's actually called a central fan, not an attic fan. An attic, attic fan is different than a central fan. No. The one I'm talking about, central fan, the one you just want is an attic fan to pull the heat out. You're right. Yes. Yes. Correction. Sorry about the mistake on that. So it's called a central fan. You may see them in your house. Very common along the shoreline as well. Uh, very cool thing. Anybody, questions, anybody at all? All right, fantastic. Keep them going over here. Um, prepping your home with the inside of your house. Springtime comes. Check your baseboards. Check your radiators. Wipe them down. There's probably a lot of dust in the house. Get them cleaned. Uh, it's going to make a huge difference on how your house is going to look. People notice the schmutz in your house more than you do when you're living there. So be conscious of it. Go to your windows. Lift open your windows. You're going to have a bunch of pollen and more schmutz in your windows. You want to get them nice and clean. Make sure the windows are clean. Get the glass plus cleaner. Clean your windows. So when people come in and look through your windows, you're going to see beautiful sunlight coming in. Um, let's see. Running your humidifier in the summer is very important. Yep, especially uh, in the basement. Number one, number one spot to definitely make sure you have a humidifier in the basement is probably going to be in two spots. One is going to be somewhere near a Bilco door, if you have one, right? And the other one might be somewhere you have um, maybe a basement system, which is great because you can take the humidifier and take the hose and throw it into the sump pump. Mm -hmm. Very convenient. Um, or near the washer and dryer room, you can have enough, sometimes a sink over there, or even the washer, you can drop the hose inside. This way you don't have to pull the bucket out all the time to go empty it out. Right. But definitely run a dehumidifier, and you should really make sure the dehumidifier is running on the lower side, maybe around 60, to make sure it's pulling as much air out of that uh, room as possible. Definitely changes the way your house is going to operate, and for people when they're coming to your house, to have that nice, clean air smell. Yeah. Um... I don't know that there's any one thing that dissuades somebody from considering a house that a musty, uh, damp, sensing or smelling basement. Yes. It's, it's one of the single most, you know, I've seen first floor, second floor, we go down to the basement and it's like, done, that's right. it. You, you smell, know. you smell moist, you smell Especially water. Especially if the laundry is down there. Uh, you're yep. That's a great point. You have laundry down in the basement. Make sure the door is closed in your washer. It shouldn't be left open because it has that moisture smell. And if, and if laundry has been sitting for more than a couple hours or even a day or two, then you have that, what would you call that smell? It smells like damp some, clothes. The, yeah, like the, the dirty, wet clothes. That's not going to be a healthy uh, thing for us to have smelling when you walk through a basement. Um, all right. Uh, let's see what else I can talk to you about. Well, Eric mentioned uh, you're going to talk about the spigot. Spigot or hose bib. Yeah. So um, over the winter, um, what a lot of folks will do is uh, shut the valve off on the inside of the house so that uh, the pipe between the inside and the outside of the house does not freeze 
and then you get water all over your basement. So going back to the spigot, no, but the water a, beds. I mean, yeah, so that's one of the things that, uh, that uh, you know, folks do is that it's kind of like a winterization just to make sure that they don't get a leak down in their basement. But I mean, there's a lot of things that, um, that come summertime, especially when you're, when you're gonna be listing your house for sale. Um, I wrote down some of the notes here. Fencing, repair or replace broken, fen uh, bro broken fences or gates. Fencing is one of the most beautiful things people see when they go to a house. That's a good point you, uh, point you make. Fencing is one of those very desirable things people love to have. Yeah, the vinyl or chain link, it doesn't matter if it's if it's in good shape. Yeah. It's, it's important. It's a great privacy piece. And also, if you have a vinyl fence, you want to make sure you power wash that too because mm -hmm. it can get green from all the grass cutting it over and over. Yeah. Um, uh, driveways um, and patches, you know, um, it helps. Absolutely. What you're, again, you're, someone's pulling up to your house. They see a nice clean driveway. It's been smoothed out. It's been patched. There's no potholes inside it. No cracks. Great point. Yeah. Very good point, um, man. Uh, mailboxes, so funny. Um, I've had a, a, probably a couple of closings where the mailbox that was on the post in the front of the house was not the same mailbox on the day of the walkthrough. That's an interesting point. Because Especially if it's summertime. They, well, I, you know, I don't know if you know around, um, I forgot which street it is, but there's the, the bass mailbox. You ever seen it? Oh, the bass with yes, the mouth open. yes. It only comes out in the, in the warmer weather. You know, you know, I wonder if they have to disclose. I would think they have to disclose something about their mailbox if they're going to say, okay, I'm taking my mailbox, but I'll replace it with something else. Right. Because typically in, in a house, if you're going to remove something, I mean, Again, if the buyers remember it. Yeah, I don't, know that it, I don't know that it falls under the permanent structure of yeah. what, you know. It's interesting. Uh, another thing to prep for or to be wary of uh, is uh, power or cable um, uh, trees overhanging the or branches over, over the power and cable lines. Because uh, I last year I went to see a couple of places that they weren't taking really good care of the property. And there were some branches um, that were way over the power lines. Uh, and the and the cable lines, and it was actually touching them. I it was actually you, resting on them. I actually wonder or think you can call utility companies probably to give them a call for that. They might actually come out. I don't think for they free, do. No? I don't think they do. Might be worth a shot. Give them a call yeah. first. See if they'll come out and do it for free versus. But I'm talking it. about the line, the private line from the pole to your house. Not they'll do the lines that are going from pole to pole. Uh, the pole to the house, I think, is on you. I think that's the way it goes. We'll have to check on that. We'll have to check on that. That's a good point. I like that idea. Listen, this is a great point you made over there. I like that a lot because they're a very important piece of the puzzle when it comes to selling your house. And how people actually look and feel about, again, you can say, well, today in today's market, you know, I saw that house for sale and it looked like crap and it sold. Is that what you want to compare it to? I hope not. You should be focusing on making your house the best you can make it. Because people, and we know this as buyers, they're flipping through and in three seconds, they'll make a decision where they want to go even inside your house to look at the photos. They can get turned off right away just from what's in the outside. Yeah. Um, so you definitely want to make sure that your landscaping is up to snuff. Um, I do want to mention. Oh, well, you had mentioned uh, cleaning the windows. Yes. Yeah, cleaning the windows. Yes. Um, but also uh, for a lot of buyers, how bright it is on the inside of the house. Yeah. Is super important. Yes. Okay. So if you have the shades and the blinds or whatever, open them up. Absolutely. Open them up. You want them to get a sense because the light can always be covered. You're right. So if somebody likes it dark, you know, yeah. they can always do something to, but you can't add sunlight. That's true. It's either there or it isn't. Which is another point you make is very important. You should call an electrician and look into getting recessed lighting put in your house. I've been recommending this a lot to my clients. And the difference it's made in the sill of their home because of the brightness, especially homes, condos, properties that are darker on the, you know, based on the way their property is pivoted, a recessed lighting will make it with the LED lights, make mm. sure to use bright white bulbs. Do not use the yellow bulbs in your house. Get rid of the yellow bulbs, bright white, for two reasons. Do they even sell incandescent bulbs anymore? Well, it's the, you know, what happens, you can, you can buy bulbs that are that yellow color versus the white color. Mm -hmm. and the white color makes a huge difference in how your paint looks in your house, number one. Number two, there's an emotional feel when someone walks to your house and it's a bright white versus yellow. It's almost like it kind of brings people down. Trust me when I say this to you, the bright white bulb is huge, LED, phenomenal. Um, I do want to mention a couple of things about this past week on some real estate stuff that we've been through, going through. Um, we listed a property in Torrington 
under contract. Uh, very exciting for the sellers. Uh, we listed a con. I'm sorry. We listed a um, holy moly a house in Hamden on Belden. Very excited to have that house under contract. Uh, we have a couple properties coming to market that uh, we want to talk about. Um, no. Do you want to mention Middletown or not no. yet? Cheshire Middletown. Okay. Yeah. So the house, I actually have a house coming to market tomorrow. This property was going to absolutely blow you guys away. It's probably one of the most beautiful ranches you've ever seen. Okay. It's a four bedroom, two bath house. We did a teaser video earlier today. If you haven't watched it, definitely watch it. Four bedroom, two bath house. It's on Patton Drive going live after midnight. Okay. This house is phenomenal. You walk in the house, you got this beautiful family room, fireplace, beautiful hardwood floors, three bedrooms to the left, beautiful bedrooms. Straight ahead, you walk in through this beautiful gourmet kitchen, granite countertops, gorgeous cabinets, lots of pullouts and cabinetry. Then it opens up to a dining room area that you can put whatever size table you want. Unbelievable. And the light fixtures in this house, unbelievable, right? But then you keep going into the back where there was, I think, an addition at some point into the living room with a, I'm sorry, with a family room back there with a pellet stove. Um, phenomenal, which opens up to the backyard, which is flat, huge, fenced in, tracks deck, pool, another tracks deck. There's a pool too? It's got a nice pool, beautiful pool. And the guy who owns this house, he's as meticulous as he gets. I think he actually goes out there with scissors and cuts the grass. That's that guy. Then you've got the master bedroom, which is huge. It's got a bathroom right outside it. Just an amazing, amazing house. 80 Patton Drive, coming to market tomorrow morning. Do not miss this one. We have uh, next week a couple more properties that are going to be coming to market. We'll talk about also to get you guys a heads up on it. And uh, if you're looking to get your house in the market, two things I want to tell you. And we're going to end with this before we get to the Tumblr thing, unless you want to say something first. I don't want to interrupt you. No, I'm in a hurry, remember. But very important, <laughs> very important, okay? When you hire a realtor, you want to make sure that that realtor is getting the best of the best professionals to sell your house in regards to photo and video. I'm noticing more and more realtors are really, really, really chintzing out on photos and they're selling your house and I don't care what kind of price range it is, if it's 100,000 or 500,000 or a million, <clears throat> you should have professional photography, you should have professional videography and you should be proud of what you see. Make sure that you see your house on the computer. What does it look like? Would you go and want to see your own house for sale? Hold your realtors responsible for that. Don't let them, just because the market is hot, to go and just throw up crappy pictures, okay? Be specific. And I can guarantee you one thing. If you allow us to sell your house, you will have the best of the best to sell your house with photo, video, marketing, social media. You guys know there's no one who does social media like we do. You're going to be on eight different platforms, and the amount of hits you'll have on your house is unbelievable. And a podcast. And, of course, the podcast, <laughs> which is another great place to talk about your house for sale. All right. We thank you so much for joining us every week. Hope you enjoyed our show. Love to have the opportunity to be with you every week, 5 o'clock on Tuesdays. Please check us out on YouTube, Team Powerhouse Real Estate. Hit subscribe and catch us on the replay on Saturdays where it's a little bit more exciting, the whole presence of this show. Jonathan, let's hit the spinner wheel for the free Tumblr giveaway. Bum, 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 bum. Wish we had music. Tessa Hamilton from Instagram. Tessa, Tessa Hamilton, Hamilton from Instagram. Congratulations Congrats. on winning your Tumblr. Please reach out to us. We look forward to getting this over to you. We appreciate you guys every week. If you want to be on the spinning wheel, please make sure to make a comment over here on Facebook, Instagram, YouTube. Go subscribe. And every time you do that, you get one more entry in to win a beautiful tumbler that we use every week over here. Thank you so much, guys, for being a part of our show. We love you. We appreciate you. And we look forward to working for you. Thank you so much. Have a great night. Good night. Good night, guys.